Come have fun with us and don't forget to subscribe. What's up everybody, I'm Rick. And I'm Anna. And welcome to our review to the 1935 movie Les Miserables. To all of you who are new to our channel, hi and welcome. Please subscribe to have fun with us. This channel is dedicated to Rick and my bucket list of goals and dreams that we hope to accomplish in our lifetime. And one of those goals for us is to watch every movie that was nominated for Best Picture at the Academy Awards from 1927 to 2028. That is 101 years of Academy Awards Best Picture nominees and their respective winners. And we are currently at the year 1935. To this day, we have watched 64 movies as part of this goal and we have discussed one movie that is not available to us because it's only available at UCLA and one lost movie, The Patriot. Yes. Is it lost or did you hide it, Anna? Maybe I'm someone else hid it. I'm to be suspicious here. Maybe someone else hid it from us. Because I'm looking for it and I can't find it. <laughs> and, uh, hmm. For those of you who don't know how these reviews are going, the first part is a spoiler-free part in which we give our top-level appreciation and some commentary on the movie without spoiling the story. And the second part will be a spoiler-filled part in which we would deep dive into certain scenes, certain elements of the movie while spoiling the story. However, do not worry. If you don't want to be spoiled, you can stay for the whole first part and we will warn you before we get to the spoiler field part. And at that point, you can head to the description box below where there will be a timestamp that will take you directly to the end of the video where we do the ranking. Indeed. Because every year we rank all the nominated movies according to our likings and preferences. But before we get to all of that, let me give you, Rick, and you guys watching us right now some information about the movie in the trivia section. What is this movie we watch? Let me say, have. I've never heard of that. Let me say, is a 20th century picture drama film that came out on April 20th, 1935. It is based on the 1862 novel by Victor Hugo with the same title. The movie was directed by Richard Boleslowski and it stars Frederick March as Jean Valjean and Jean Mathieu, whom we've seen before in two movies uh, that we watched as part of this goal, Smiling Through and The Barrels of Wimpole Street. Charles Lachter as Inspector Emile Javert, whom we've seen before in three movies that we watch as part of this goal, The Private Life of Henry VIII, The Birds of Impulse Street, and Ruggles of Red Gap. Rochelle Hudson as Cosette, whom we've also seen before in She Done Him Wrong and Imitation of Life, mm -hmm. and John Beale as Marius. Have we seen him before? No, 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 we haven't. The movie was nominated for four Academy Awards. First of all, Best Picture, which is why we have watched it and we are reviewing it right now. Next one, Best Cinematography for Greg Tolland, Best Film Editing for Barbara McLean, and Best Assistant Director for Eric Stacey. Also, this one was the first of two adaptations of this movie that received a nomination for Best Picture at the Academy Awards. And this puts the movie on a short list of only six pairs of movie to have received an Academy Award, both of them. To have received an Academy Award or being nominated? A nomination for an Academy Award. So That's I'm guessing a... another one of them is Little Women. Uh, yes. So this was it for the information that I had about the movie. So let us now move on to the spoiler-free conversation. So, Rick, without spoiling the plot of the movie, what did you think of this movie? This is a difficult one. It's a difficult one, huh? This is a hard one. Uh... You're so familiar with the story, I'll tell you, right? Yeah, so I have actually the book right there. Let me you see how worn out it is. I've read it uh, more than once. I have several versions, actually. There's another version right over here with golden page. It's about uh, Notre Dame and Les Mis. Uh, so I love this story. I've read it several times over the years. And so I came into this movie with... Very high expectations? No, no. Okay. With the knowledge of the book. Ah, okay. Which makes it very difficult for me to look at this in a partial way because every change they made, whether it was small or big, kind of annoyed me. This <laughs> is a big issue of the movie is that it made a lot of changes, not only 
in the way movies like adaptations after books usually do in which they compress the stories or skip stuff but they made changes to the storyline itself and sometimes to the characters like who yeah. they are and how they're portrayed um and actually fun fact the whole wikipedia page of this movie is literally just a list of differences between the book, the book and, and, the movie. and the movie which yes. there are a lot of yeah uh, so yeah it's difficult for me to like watch this movie and say what a great movie i'd watch it again i probably wouldn't but that's mainly because all of these changes damper my enjoyment now that has nothing to do with other elements of the movie like if it looked good if it's well acted you know these are separate from the story that in my opinion they messed with a bit too much so then let's get a little bit into that the story itself other than the fact that it wasn't like so much an adaptation as it was a Inspir inspired by in some uh, parts. inspired by the big parts of the big events of the yeah. book, you know. Uh, but other than that, how did you feel about the way the story in, of the movie was uh, like uh, depicted? I mean, they they did what they had to do. You know, I understand to a certain extent uh, having to make cuts and changes because the story is huge. You right. know, it's two volume or one huge book, and so you have to make cut. You have to. Uh, make choices and so with what they had in terms of time like a, it's a bit less than two hours I thought they did a good job of telling you a coherent story from beginning to end you know I feel like it is a coherent story but even if you don't take into consideration the fact that they didn't follow through the whole story of the the book I feel like it still has some inconsistencies when you think of the time when the story is being told oh yeah <laughs> I feel like there are just historical inconsistencies Yeah, anachronism, there. yeah. Yeah, because of, I, I also read the book, uh, so I also am familiar with the story. Not as many times as you, I only read it once. <laughs> but I'm familiar with the story. And even without thinking necessarily about the differences, I feel like the way um, some um, scenes are being portrayed, especially which involve female characters, I feel like it's not consistent with... The times. The times, mm -hmm. yes. Moving slightly into the the looks of the movie, I feel like that also applies to their... Um, mm. I feel like not so much attention was paid to this. I feel like more than once I saw the characters, the way they were, they were dressed, the way they would behave and think this is like 20th century behavior of a high society woman, not 19, uh, mid 19th century, definitely, or early 19th century. Mm, yeah, that's uh, that's interesting. I guess I was distracted by the, the storyline. I didn't pay attention much to uh, what they were wearing, but uh, yeah, definitely that could also be uh, something that takes you out of the story if you realize that, hey, that doesn't match with the time. Yeah, moving on a little bit to maybe perhaps more positive things. What did you think of the acting? The acting, I thought they were good. I thought, uh, you know, our main two characters, of course, Vajan and uh, Javert, did a great job uh, in each of their role yeah i thought so too and when we saw the the listing of the actors in the beginning and i saw um charles lachton name there i didn't even know who he was i mean he didn't say who he was portraying but i was like oh that's a good choice for the role because i was sure he would be javert like there's no other yeah. way and i feel like character wise it was a good choice interestingly enough they did receive some criticism for the fact that appearance wise he doesn't, he look, doesn't yeah. look like the way Javert is portrayed in the mm -hmm. in the book but I feel like character wise he fit the role really well yeah he played it well uh, I think in this case I would give like if I had to go with uh, an MVP here uh, Valjean in my opinion was portrayed better like uh, there were more nuances yeah to, to his to character. The character yeah yes and uh, like Javert is supposed to look like he's not nuanced, but be nuanced, you know? Yeah. Uh, and here you don't really see that from uh, Charles until the end. Until the very end, yes. Yeah. Maybe it helped also the, the fact that the um, story was mainly told from Valjean's uh, point, point of view. point of view. Of course. Mm -hmm. um, we don't really get other perspectives to the story. Yeah. So I guess that, that changes a lot the way you perceive a story. Yeah. So are there any other subjects, themes that you'd like to, to touch on in the spoiler-free part? You know, I can't really get into much without uh, just talking about the story and uh, some of the elements that, you know, were inconsistent in my opinion. So in terms of spoiler-free, I think uh, that's pretty much it. 
Uh, if I could say whether or not I recommend this movie, that's... right? That's what I was gonna ask. <laughs> Look, as as a fan of the book, I wouldn't recommend. Yeah, I feel like I would say the same thing. I feel like there are other adaptations that did a better, a better job, job at capturing the essence of the book, and also I feel the essence of you know the times. I feel like this movie also didn't really you know exactly. I can't really put my finger on it. You know, I feel like it kind of missed the mark on yeah. that. I gotta say, you know, I was saying earlier, it tells a Korean story from beginning to end. Yeah. It does, but the story still feels rushed because of how much they cut and how much they jump, you know. Yeah. Uh, which is a problem that we've talked about uh, in previous, you know, adaptations of book. Uh, mainly Copperfield was the most recent one. But here it's even more pronounced, in my opinion, because right. I'm aware of what they cut and how much they jump in time. Uh, and with Copperfield, that wasn't the case. So I feel it more, definitely. Yeah, I, uh, I'm guessing people who did read David Copperfield would know. Yeah. Would, would, feel, would yeah. have the same feeling watching that movie. Mm -hmm. But but here we get to the big third act of the story. Uh, and I'm like, wow, we're already there. And oh, it's already over, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I, get, I got that feeling too a lot. Yeah. So yeah, I feel like yeah, in terms of recommendations for this story in particular, which is a big title, it's a big story. You know, it's a it's a big fish to try and catch <laughs> when it comes to movie adaptations. You can do better than this. Yeah. So, unfortunately, we wouldn't recommend it. So, that being said, that is it for our spoiler-free conversation. If you don't want to get spoiled in the next section, I invite you to go to the timestamp in the description box below and jump directly to the end of this uh, video at the ranking section. And for those of you who have either watched the movie or don't mind getting spoiled because probably you already know the story, let us move on to the spoiler field section of this video. Let us start this section the way we always do. I will give you a short synopsis of the movie. In early 19th century France, an ex-convict who failed to report to parole is relentlessly pursued over a 20-year period by an obsessive policeman. So yes, this is the synopsis of the movie. Where should we start this conversation? With all the differences. <laughs> I suppose, I guess one of the biggest differences in my opinion, there are many. The one that jumped at me like immediately was Cosette's character is entirely different. Yes, and I, I think when I was talking earlier about also inconsistencies with the time period, you also mostly see it in Cosette's character because she is much more independent and much more uh, assertive than portrayed in the book, but also than I feel a woman of her status would be in those times, or a girl, she's, she's a young girl, where she goes about town by herself, she goes into the offices of the revolutionary <laughs> group by herself. Like I feel like the book does a very good job at explaining how a woman would, a, a young woman would not find herself in those, like, in those type of environments without someone well a young her. woman of a status so oh yeah a what young woman of her status eponine is and all of these type of uh, yes encounters but because that wouldn't you know yeah exactly mm -hmm. when she finds herself in this type of situations uh, jean valjean is always with her she's never by herself so yeah uh i feel like that changes a lot her character it changes a lot the story overall what? One of the first uh, decisions that they make is to have her uh, reunited with her mom before the mom, uh, before Fontaine dies and have her live with her for a while and then have her be aware that Valjean is a convict uh, fleeing from the law. That right. changes the whole relationship between the two of them. Yeah, like throughout the, the story in the movie, she helps him yeah. uh, like uh, avoid the police <laughs> and she's very much aware of the situation that they're in. Whereas I feel like a big part of his character in this second half of the of the book was that he was mainly driven by the idea of protecting her of the truth and also of the world out there. And so the question becomes, you know, is it egregious? Is it a sin to just change something? Or is it the way they changed it? You know, like, would they have been able to make a change of this magnitude? And then we watch the movie and we be like, oh, they changed the story, but it's fine. It's uh it's a great take on it. Or is it that as soon as they change something, uh, we would have complained? I wonder, I'm not certain I feel, myself. I feel like the problem that I have with it is that they just change these things and we'll get into that a little bit later, into more of the reason why they made all those changes. Um, but yeah, they change these things 
but it didn't really have an impact on the like overall storyline i feel like they should have told a different story mm. you know with a very different outcome i feel like something else should have come out of you know because that being aware of what's happening that should have had a bigger impact on the overall story and then at least i would have been impressed with oh they reinvented the story mm. it doesn't feel like they reinvented it it feels like they made some changes but like they wanted the same outcome in the end like i said at the beginning we still hit the main beats of the story yeah. from the book it's just that the characters are changed the situations are uh, kind of different and even then you know it's a risk you take some people will like it some people won't yeah it might be a success it might not but at least it would be something different and original but i feel like even in this case some people liked it you know it was nominated for best picture yeah definitely i i just feel like for me personally that i feel like that would have impressed me more mm -hmm. you know it's kind of like the... I'm going to go on a tangent here. <laughs> go. <laughs> it's kind of like music covers, in my opinion. Uh, mm. it, it depends what your sensibilities are. But some people, they enjoy uh, music covers as just me singing or whoever is singing uh, a song of someone else and their style, but it's me singing, you know? Right, like some, the way the song is. Yeah, some people enjoy that. I don't. Yeah, I know what you mean. If you're going to make a cover, do it... Like, make like, it your own. Make it your own. Yeah. Otherwise, I'm just going to listen to the original song, you know? Right. And so that's kind of how I feel here. If you're going to change stuff, change stuff, you know? Really yeah. make it your own movie or like, your own story. Like, take, take that step, you know? You have to be brave to, yeah. to do something like Otherwise, that. Otherwise, I'll just read the book if I want the, the, that story. Yeah. Right. So... I said earlier I wanted to get a little bit into the reasons why they made those changes and I guess maybe you have a feeling about what those reasons were. The code? The code. Yeah. So I don't know if you noticed and I didn't actually notice while I was watching the movie but afterwards thinking about it and also doing the research for this review I realized and it makes sense the main changes that they make are about like how they depicted the misery. Mm. Les Miserables, like that bottom layer of society, the, the poorest people, uh, Eponine's living conditions, uh, Fontaine becoming a, 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 a prostitute, prostitute, yeah, it's kind of glossed and, over. Yeah, it's not, it's not actually mentioned, mentioned at all. Yeah. You kind of get it a little bit in that one scene when she breaks into Vajan's office, the way she was dressed. Mm -hmm. But even then, she has all her but, hair, she has a yeah, teeth. Yeah, exactly. Know. Not really showing, showing the Thénardier family at all mm -hmm. Gavroche being completely taken out of the story like a child living in those conditions he was basically homeless he was living uh, even though he did have a family he was never with them mm -hmm. and living in those conditions you know as a child like all of those things that were like really harsh really you know they were taken, taken out. out yes as imposed by the code. I feel like the only aspect that remained that was really like striking and brutal was uh, Jean Valjean as a convict. In jail, yeah. In jail, yes. And so this, in my opinion, kind of makes it worse because <laughs> at least if the changes were made with some misguided artistic attempt to make the story you wanted to make, but no, here they were imposed. So it's not clear exactly how much they were imposed or how much just the company was aware of we have to respect oh, these kind of yeah. rules Otherwise so we can't movies, be put yeah, yeah we can't mm. put i'm sure maybe the the truth is somewhere in, is somewhere in the middle and maybe they did try to put some elements but then they were asked to to take them out yeah and some elements they never put them in from the beginning because they knew it would be too tacky mm -hmm. but still the situation is the same you know it, it makes me kind of mad because i'm watching these movies the, like these old movies, you know, and I'm feeling the bravery of like producing producing companies back then to take on these big stories, to tell these like, you know, uh, amazing uh, events and all of that. You think and bravery? Then it gets, hmm? Bravery is how you would define it? I mean, you know, for the time, they're taking on big titles that we've seen this year only. Yeah, uh, but some would argue... The same argument that we hear often today is it's not taking a risk to take a property that's already popular and make a movie out of it. Yeah, that's, what I, what, that's not what I mean. Mm. I mean just in the sense that they, they took on the risk of making a movie that... Of that scale? Of that scale, yeah, mm. that's what I meant, you know. Like they're not going with the easy stuff all the time, you know. We, we see a lot of, of like really complex movies, but then they kind of get like, you know, cut down yeah. and like 
pushed back by the code and it makes me like i wish we would have seen what they would have created if there weren't like those rules weren't there we still oh, have a uh, <laughs> how much 20 years of the code so we'll see we'll oh see. my gosh too much it's <laughs> too much uh, <laughs> so i think before we we get to the end of this conversation there is one scene that i want to talk about in particular and that is the end the mm. ending scene what do you think about that they ended it in a way that makes it a much happier ending than it is in the book yeah and I guess that's the story they were they were trying to tell. And with the way they portrayed Cosette's character, it wouldn't have worked to just do what happened in the book. Yeah. So I guess they, they kind of were stuck there. I feel like they pushed themselves into a corner. There. Yeah. <laughs> They're like, okay, we have to end it here because from here on it doesn't make sense anymore. <laughs> exactly. And some of the key characters also are not present. Tenaze is not there, etc. So like you can't really get that same ending. Yeah. So yeah, I suppose... Uh, with what they had, you don't get the feeling, I yeah. think. Because the ending of the book is very bittersweet. You know, mm. Vajan dies, uh, yeah. spends the last uh, moments of his life almost alone. And then on his deathbed, that's when uh, he's reunited with Cosette. Here, that doesn't happen. Kind of ends with him as, quote-unquote, the winner of this duel with uh, Javert. Yeah. Not willingly, because he, it's not like he defeated Javert. Javert kills himself just like in the book but the way it ends with just like Bajan free you know yeah. and no worries anymore and I feel like that was never really the message that was never the point of uh, right is there anything else that you would like to to talk about yeah I understand a lot of the changes you have to make you know to respect the code or to cut down on the time of the movie but like why change his prison a number you know <laughs> <laughs> well they change a lot there actually they also change the time of the amount of time that he spent in prison yeah yeah from but like still 19 the, the, to 10. the prisoner number like 24601 is known you know it's even used in popular culture as a reference to the book and just put mm. the same number what's the point of changing the number yeah i wonder i wonder at that point i feel like you're just changing to change you know maybe there was some uh, like technical uh, difficulty to put five digits on that the thing that he was wearing and I mean, for it's easier i don't know I just, like, <laughs> Maybe they already had them from another movie and they're like, we're going to reuse yeah. the same things. But yeah, this is details. Uh, like, uh, I don't really have much to say other than, you know, what we've been talking about. Yeah, I feel like the... there are a lot of small differences like this that really don't make sense. Like, Javel, why give him a, a first name? He never has a first yeah. name in the book or in any other. Or I think there are other movies adaptations. I mean, I haven't seen like every that. adaptation of it, but in the book, he doesn't have a yeah, first name. Yeah, in the book, he doesn't. Like, why give him a first name? Yeah. So, I guess uh, this is it for our spoiler-filled uh, conversation about this movie. Overall, we still keep our... Um, same recommendation, same recommendation from earlier, yes. yeah. You can find better adaptations of this movie. There are sure. so many adaptations. Yeah. yeah. There's even an anime, yeah. if you're interested. <laughs> so, that being said, let us now move on to the ranking section of this video. The ranking of the 1935 Best Picture nominee movies as of now is at number 8, The Lives of a Bengal Lancer, at number 7, Alice Adams, at number 6, Naughty Marietta, at number 5, Ruggles of Red Gap, at number 4, Top Hat, at number 3, David Copperfield, at number 2, Captain Blood, and at number 1, The Informer. Where would we put this movie on this list? I think it's your... Turn. Yeah, but I'm gonna let you go here because oh, okay. I'm not. I'm really not uh, partial. Uh, quite frankly, I would put it last, but uh, I feel like my emotions are talking, so maybe. Oh, I wouldn't put it last. Mm. I would put it at number six, which is above Naughty Marietta, below Ruggles of Red Gap, and frankly, initially, initially I wanted to say seven. But then in my head, I wanted to compare it with Naughty Marietta and it took me a long time to remember, remember Naughty Marietta? What, what that movie was about. <laughs> and I feel like if it took me that long, then maybe it's not that, that good. good. <laughs> Overall, yeah. You know, she um, goes to America. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I know, I know, I know. But it took me a while to yeah. like think about like, oh, wait, how was that movie? Like, how much did I like it? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I think number six, I would put it there. Okay, yeah. I mean, I'm going to follow you on that one again. Okay. Because... Because you would put it last. I, I have was a up jerk there. reaction. Like, oh no, this movie. The 4601. Uh, but yeah, no. Uh, six. Six works. Okay. 
So the ranking of the 1935 Academy Awards Best Picture nominees as of now and according to our preferences is at number nine, The Lives of a Bengal Lancer, at number eight, Alice Adams, at number seven, Naughty Marietta, at number six, Les Miserables, at number five, Ruggles of Red Gap, at number four, Top Hat, at number three, David Copperfield, at number two, Captain Blood, and at number one, The Informer. I'm quite proud of The Informer, like, it got Sticking, there. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's mm -hmm. been there for uh, a while. We'll see. We still have a few movies. Maybe it'll be dethroned. We haven't watched the winner yet. Yeah, but honestly, <laughs> the winner wasn't necessarily our top pick in the last uh, yeah, few Yeah, in rankings, the past. So, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I don't know. We'll see. We'll mm -hmm. see. Frankly, I'm a little bit disappointed because we've had some big titles on this year's uh, list so far. And there are still more big titles to come. Um, but I feel like they haven't done as good as I wanted them to. Yeah, but I think it's even more difficult for like movies, like we've watched a few that are based on known properties. It's even more difficult for them, in my opinion, to... I feel like it's especially difficult when you're trying to take on such a big story. Yeah. Like a complex story, mm -hmm. long, you know, with different perspectives um, put like into the story. Copperfield and... is over yeah. the life of the character, yeah. same for Les Mis. Right. You know, and then you condense that to a two-hour movie. It's hard. It's hard, yeah. That is, that is true. That being said, that was it for our review of the 1935 movie Les Miserables. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you want to watch more videos of ours. Don't forget also that this channel is not just about reviewing movies. It's a bucket list channel in which we try to accomplish the goals and dreams that are on our bucket list. And they are so different. We do things from learning how to cook, to traveling, to self-growth and learning new stuff. And we make videos about all of them and we bring them all to you. So yeah, please subscribe and ring the notification bell if you want to be notified next time when we drop a new video. Once again, thank you so much for watching and don't forget, if you have a dream or a goal that you want to realize, take that first step. Bye.